Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the president, and all those in public service, and for our armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and the ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord swore to David this truth, and he shall not reject it. Save us, O Son of God, who rose from the dead. Save us who sing to you, hallelujah. I shall set upon your throne one from the fruit of your loins. So there. 
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Master and Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister to your glory. Grant that the holy angels may enter with us, so together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Together, please, the hymn of our church it is on page two of your bulletin.
In your holy birth, immaculate one, Joachim and Anna were rid of the shame of childlessness, Adam and Eve of the corruption of death. And so your people, free of the guilt of their sins, celebrate crying. The barren one gives birth to the Theotokos, who nourishes our life. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, the holy God, you dwell among your saints, you are praised by the seraphim, Christ all the him, and glorified by the cherubim, you are worshipped by all the heavenly powers, you have brought all things out of nothing into being, you have created man and woman in the image and likeness and drawn them with all the gifts of your grace. Wisdom and understanding to the supplicant and not overlook the sinner, but establish our answers as a way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and unworthy servants, to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar, to offer you to worship and praise. Master, accept the Christ and him also from the lips of the sinners and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and involuntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant that we worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives by the intercession of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. Let us be attentive. To you, O Lord, I cry, O my God. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, see with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that would compel you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for that cross of Christ. For even those who receive circumcision do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, upon the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. The Lord said, No one has ascended into heaven but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Good morning. Please be seated. Our church school students, please come to the front. This is the day that the Lord has made. I am so happy to see you here today. You know what I'm very happy about? So it's the first day of our church school year, but I've seen so many of you all summer, and you didn't take the summer off from church. You took it off from school, but not from church, and God bless you for that. It makes me very, very happy. I saw a lot of you around the Greek dancing, you did such an awesome job during the festival. People were so proud of you. And parents, thank you for all the wonderful support that you give your children. So, okay. Um, sometimes things don't make sense. For example, how many gods do we have? Everybody, raise all those fingers right here. One God. What does it say at the beginning of the creed? I believe in one God. But when we talk about God, we talk about God as what? Three. What are they? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. Doesn't make sense, does it? But we still believe it. Now, what about Jesus? Right there. Was Jesus God or was Jesus man? Raise your hand if you think Jesus was God. Everybody raise your hand. Thank you. Okay. Raise your hand if you think Jesus was man. Everybody raise your hand. Okay. Jesus was indeed fully God and fully man. How can you be God and man at the same time, and a hundred percent of each. It doesn't make sense, does it? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. A hundred percent God, a hundred percent man, and the holy, the holy Trinity, all God, not split up into thirds, right? So, how do you believe something that somebody tells you, but 
you can't figure it out. Like when a teacher teaches you something new and you can't figure it out and you say, I don't understand, and they say, but this is how it works. What do you have to do? You gotta, what do you have to do? You're gonna, like you say, no, I don't understand it, so it can't be true? No. Ask. You ask, they explain it to you, and then there's this thing that you have to use to get there from where you don't understand it to you believing it. And it's because it's called what? Believe. Tru believing and? Trust. 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 Very good. All right. So, when ultimately the church tells us through the teachings of the fathers and the revelation of the scripture and 2,000 years plus of church history, whoops, tells us these things, even though we don't really fully understand them, we need to learn to trust them. And so when the church teaches you these things, we don't really have a question about it. That is what is. And so our theme for church school this year, in the many lessons that you're going to be learning, the stories of the saints and the Bible, Bible lessons and so many other things, it is going to be this. When you get to the point where sometimes you will hear something in the faith, I can't figure it out. And yet you know this is the, t the writings of the Bible and teachings of the church. What gets you across that bridge, that gap of learning, is trust. And trust in who? Ultimately, who do we trust in? Everybody together. Trust in the? Say it again. Trust in the Lord. There are a lot of people, a lot of things in your life that will ask for your trust. The one that always, always, always should have it is God. Now, what does that mean besides all the theology and all the church lessons? What about in our life? Sometimes things don't go exactly as we want them to go. I'm going to show you some examples. So, whoops, let me turn this off. Okay. I draw your attention to the figure right here. Everybody look this way. This was a very holy man. He was a priest, then he became a bishop. He was a theologian, he was a teacher. He became the head of a monastery. Anybody know his name? Anybody know that icon? Read the name at the top there. Saint Nectarios. Everybody say that. Nectarios. He's one of the most famous saints in modern Greece. Well, guess what happened to him? He did all the things that he should do in his life. He was honest. He was faithful. He trusted in the Lord at all times. And yet, what did they do to him? They accused him of false things. They exiled him from where he was bishop. They sent him to this little tiny, tiny island of Aegina in Greece. And he started a monastery. Then they spread rumors about terrible things that he was doing at the monastery. None of them were true. So what do you think had to happen inside St. Nectarios when all these bad things were happening, but he was doing all the things that God wanted him to do? He had to... What, everybody? Trust in the Lord. Because you know why he's on the wall of our church right now? Because he was proclaimed a saint by the church, because he trusted in God and did what God called him to do, even though he didn't understand why all those things were happening. Lord, I love you. Lord, I'm doing what you asked me to do. I'm serving you with all my heart. Why am I still suffering? Why are people saying bad things about me? You think anybody has ever said anything bad about you? Hmm, if you've been living and breathing long enough, somebody has, all right? I can promise you that. Do we understand why? No, who knows what's in their minds? But what do we do? We trust in the Lord to still do the right thing. All right, I'm gonna draw your attention over here. Let's go to this side of the church. And now, we have two people that we celebrated yesterday. Saints Joachim and Anna. They really did all the right things. They were married. They stood before God. They were faithful. They supported the temple. This was pr prior to Jesus' coming, so therefore they were members of the Old Testament temple. They gave a third of everything they made 
to the temple, to the church. They gave the second third to take care of the poor. They gave, they saved the last third for themselves. So all that money they were making. What a beautiful example of stewardship. Then they wanted to have a baby. And they kept trying and trying and trying. Um, usually, when do people have babies? When they're, one, married, okay, two. When they are what? Huh? 30, 20s, 30s, even 40s, whatever. Raise your hand if you know anybody that had a baby when they were 80. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Well, all right, we know them, right? But what happened was, way beyond the time when you're able to have babies, God finally blessed them. They kept praying and praying, and nothing was happening. So what do you think they did? Do you think that when they turned about 60, they said, God, that's it, I'm done. I don't understand it, and so I'm taking back our money. We're not giving to the temple. We're not going to support the poor, and we're not even going to pray anymore. We don't believe you. What did they do? They trusted in the Lord. And so they were blessed with a baby. Anybody know the name of the baby that they had? Anybody know the name of the baby? What's the name of the baby that Joachim and Anna had? She's the biggest icon in this church. Yes, anybody? Yes. Mary, that's right. Right there she is, the Virgin Mary, the Theotokos. Very good. All right. Let's go to the third trust in the Lord example and we'll be done today. Third example is right up here of a young woman, who knows, maybe 16 or so years old, who was raised faithfully, given to the temple. She was blessed and taken care of all of her life, raised as a child of God, really. And eventually, she was given into the hands of an older man to take care of her. His name was Joseph. He's pictured up there. And one day, an angel comes to her and says, as you see in this icon, right here and right there, that you are going to have a baby and that baby is going to be the Son of God because it's going to be happen by the Holy Spirit. And she says, how can this be? And, she's, and, and the angel said, I, you know, I bring you good news and this is going to happen by God's will. And she says instead, no way, are you kidding me? She says, let it be done to me according to your will. And she trusted in the Lord. So there's three examples for us today. Saint Nectarios, Joachim and Anna, and the Theotokos. So people that didn't understand what was happening to them in their lives, but ultimately they trusted in the Lord. And that's the theme of our church school year. And our church, our teachers, our wonderful staff that is helping you are going to be focusing on this throughout the year and our other youth ministries. But this is only the small thing, trust in the Lord, right? It comes from a quote from the book of Proverbs. I need some help up here because it's a pretty long quote. Sophia, you want to start? Here you go. Come on up. Okay. And I need a little bit more. One more. Uh, let's come on over here. Hold this. Come on, sweetie. Cassini. There you go. Okay, hold it up so everybody can read it. Everybody. All right. So this is a quote from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. And this is the whole big extended theme. And there's some important parts for you. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not just a little bit, not just when it feels good, but all your heart. And the second part, and lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because this mind, no matter how smart it is, does not always understand the ways of God. Because the Bible tells us, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In all your ways acknowledge him, meaning in everything that you do, in school, in church, in friends, in sports, and everywhere. And he shall direct your paths like he directed St. Nectarius, like he directed Joachim and Anna, like he directed his own holy mother who bore him in the flesh. This is your guide um, roadmap for this year in church school and it's also a roadmap for your life as well. So your teachers are going to be taking advantage of that, and I look forward to seeing you every day. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Everybody, let's read it together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. God bless you. Have a blessed year. Uh, I'm going to ask you to rise right now, and we're going to do a blessing for the church school beginning of the year. You can put that down. Thank you.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, in your, who, you who dwell in unapproachable light, you are the fountain of wisdom and learning. You taught wisdom to Solomon, and through the descent of the Holy Spirit made the fishermen preachers of the gospel, teachers and apostles. You have said, Lord, let light shine out of the darkness. Shine with the light of the knowledge of your truth and your unwaiting light in the hearts of those who teach and those who are taught in this holy church school ministry. Grant them the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. Illumine the eyes of their souls that they may come to know you and do your will. Make them children of light who bring forth fruit in every good undertaking and grow through divine wisdom through the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, of Saints Joachim and Anna, Saint Nectarius of Pandapolis, the Wonder Worker, the three holy hierarchs, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, and of all the saints, amen. God bless amen. you. Have a wonderful church school year. Thank you. You may return to your places, and please remain standing. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach to our mere ministry of the King of glory, to serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord of all, and trusted with us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord our God, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, the King of Israel. You are alone and holy one, and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and merry to you. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best of the grace of priests, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. If you I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor reject me from among your children. But make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer these gifts for you, Christ, our God, of the offering, the offering, the one who receives and is distributed, and to you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the king of all, invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us set aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the king of all and is escorted by the angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Ita quiero vi mysticos y conisones que tis of the triad y ton trisay un himno mosadones Come, let us worship God, our King, and bow down before Him. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Have mercy, have, having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever bless the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on the Lord, great mercy. According to the multitude, turn to mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Against you only by sin will I receive this The old has brought forth in the You shall purge with this when I shall be clean. You shall wash and I shall be white as snow. You shall make me hear sound of joy and gladness. That the bones that you broke may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot on my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and do a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Upon me the heavenly spirit. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth shall announce your praise and your desired sacrifice have given me. With my heart of God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion, let the world of your soul.
Lord our God, remember those who love us and those who hate us. Silia af tu pandote nin ke ai ke istu se onas toneo. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant for the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and the Ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, 
let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. That your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Peace be with all. And your Let us love one another that when this oneness of mine Christ we may is confess. Christ is not. Christ is not. I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord is my rock, my fortress. Christ. Christ is in our midst. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of the light, true God of true God, begotten and not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion, for you are God ineffable beyond comprehension. Invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing. And when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things we know and do not know. For blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying,
together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Das on son si prospero men, catapanda, panda. Please bow your heads through the end of the next hymn as we offer the consecration of the gifts. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O Theos, last in to the local so may God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that they may be to those who are taken up for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual worship for those who have chosen in the faith. Forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, professors, ascendants, and for every righteous spirit made perfect in the faith. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas. Grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The 
mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope we ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of transgressions, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, and confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Patrimon, o endisuranis, a yastito tonomasu, el thetu i vasiliasu, yenithito totelimasu, o senuranoke epitigis, tonartun imon ton epiusion, dosim in simeron, que afsimin ta oflimeta imon, os que mi safiemen sferata simon, que mi isenegis mas espirasmon, alarisa imas apotopondiru. Oti suestini vasilia, que dinamis, que doxa, tu patros, que tu iu, que tu aiu pneumatos nin, que ai, que istu seonas ton eonon. Amen. Irini passi. Tas que falasi monto crio clino me. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before your, you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail. Travel with those who travel and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Hear us from the holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. Come and sanctify us, and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God, be merciful to us and save you for us. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. Ta'ayyati sayis. The Lamb of God is broken and distributed, broken but not divided. He is for Blessed is the fervor of your saints, always known over to the ages of ages. Amen. The warmth of faith, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. Being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but as a thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King and God. Forgive me, a sinner. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King and God. To me, John, the unworthy priest, has given the most precious and holy body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Please join us today as we offer a 10 year Prisayun for Nina Nikola Nikola Yavna, right? Yes, I believe. Nikola Yavna, and also members of the Stepanow family. <laughs> Within your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the souls of your servants, for you alone are immortal. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are our God, who descended into Hades, and loosened the pains of those who are chained. Grant rest also, Savior, to the souls of your servants. <speaking in Hebrew> Hail, 
Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great love, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the souls of the servants of God, Nina, Nina, Olga, Nikolai, Alexander, Arseni, Paul the Protodeacon, Anastasia, Nazeda, Joseph, Samuel, Andrew the priest, Tatiana, Stathi the priest, Ekpolit and family, Victor, Daniel, Paulina, Anna, Boris, Ivan, Pandalaymon, Martina, Nicholas the priest, and Ivan, in the forgiveness of their sins, voluntary and involuntary. Lord have mercy. May the Lord God place their souls where the righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of their sins from Christ, our immortal King and God. Lord have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and abolished the power of the devil, giving life to a world, give rest to the souls of your servants, Nina and the members of the Stepanow family commemorated here who have fallen asleep in a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment where there is no pain, sorrow, and suffering. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin they have committed in thought, word, and deed. For there is no one who lives in a sinless, you alone or without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servants, who have, Nina, and for the members of the Stepano family who have fallen asleep, Christ our God, and to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life, creating spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servants, Nina, and members of the Stepano family, Christ our God, and to you we give glory. With your eternal Father and your all holy good and life giving spirit now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Everlasting be your memory, our brothers and sisters, worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. May your memory be eternal, dear brothers and sisters, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. Uh, may your memory be eternal, our brothers and sisters, worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. <laughs> That's better, now I can see you. Good morning. Far be it from me to glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. How strange a thing, the cross. Just take a moment to ponder it, not from a believer's point of view, for we know it for what it truly is, but from the viewpoint of one out in the world who sees the cross as an instrument of death and of defeat. After all, it was reserved for the worst criminals in the Roman Empire. Why would any faith boast of the death of its leader in such a horrible fashion? To the world, this is nonsense. Even St. Paul admits it in 1 Corinthians 1.23. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and a folly to the Gentiles. Today, as we approach the sacred feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross this week, I invite you to join me for a journey 
through that contradiction of logic to discover through the holy scriptures and hymns and traditions of the church how God used the world's greatest folly to become his sign of glory and man's greatest victory. It's the story of how by losing we win and how by dying we live. The folly of the cross in the world. Imagine trying to convince someone to spend their tourism money in your country or souvenirs for a sports team and attendance at games, or for that matter, buying a product from a company with these kind of advertising campaigns. Here's three pitches that probably wouldn't work. The tourism ad. Come spend the best vacation of your life in our country. Our government was just overthrown last week, and there's chaos in the streets, but there are so many beautiful places to see. Uh, a company. Well, hey, listen. Our tires might eventually explode, but they're really cheap while they're working. Or a sports team. Come cheer us on as we try to break our 44-year losing streak and try to win the World Series for the first time since 1979. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In other words, nobody tries to sell a loser. But to the world, that's the symbol of Christianity the instrument of death of its hero, its God, on the cross. If you think this is confusing from the outside, imagine the struggle of the apostles as they grappled with this contradiction, as they were called to bring this message to the world. Bishop Augustinos Cantiotis gets into their heads as he describes it. Understandably, the disciples were confused by the idea of the cross, as people still are today, he says, because they think rationally. This concept, very humiliating and degrading for worldly minds, was not in accord with the concept of God's omnipotence held by the ancient people. Therefore, the apostles, preaching about the crucified Lord, taught something that was received as foolishness, foolishness by the Gentiles and a scandal by the Jews against St. Paul. St. Peter even tried to stop the Lord from doing this. As Jesus spoke about the impending cross, Peter, out of his lack of understanding, said that this was a foolish choice. God forbid, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you, Matthew 16, 21. But as St. Paul reminds us, God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. So, on to the glory of the cross in our faith. How do we turn the glory, the folly of the world, into the glory of the faith? Today I offer three quick ways, supported by the hymns, traditions, and scriptures of the church. We go from folly to glory by first understanding the cross, second, venerating the cross, and third, exalting or lifting up the cross. Bringing all three together, we use as a guide a hymn that you all know. In fact, I used it during the blessing of the great entrance today. It's called the Resurrection Ode. It's actually read every Sunday during Orthros. We use it during the entrance preparation. And we read it multiple times together during the resurrection service on Astasi evening. And here it is. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you, and we call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us venerate the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection for enduring the cross for us. He destroyed death by death. That was the resurrection note. How many times did you hear the word cross? So let's break that down into its three parts, understanding, venerating, and exalting. First, understand the cross. The first step in understanding is to right our mind and see God's purpose. The cross was not chosen by the Romans. It was not chosen by the Jews. In his plan of salvation, it was chosen by God himself to defeat death and undo the tangles of the fall. The victory of the wood, on the, the wood of the tree of the cross 
undid the tragedy brought about by another wood, the wood of the tree in paradise, the forbidden fruit, where Adam and Eve rejected God after being deceived by Satan. We saw this iconographically portrayed recently in our pilgrimage to the Holy Land in the, in the Monastery of the Holy Cross, where it began with the tree in the Garden of Paradise and then ended with the cross, with many experiences of wood in between. Second of all, I listen to this recap of the hymns of the cross. O oh, tree, you are thrice blessed, for Christ our King and Lord was hung, outstretched on you of old. Through you has fallen the devil who deceived man by a tree, for he himself was snared by God who was crucified in the flesh to you, and who grants unto our souls his peace. In other words, the cross was not an accident. It was an instrument. Next, venerate the cross. To venerate means to offer honor or respect. We sometimes see people bowing down before. As I remind our church tours during the annual festival, and we had many new through here this week, and I understand perhaps there are some here today, we worship God only. But we venerate the saints, we honor and respect them, and the holy instruments of grace that are part of his plan of salvation, such as the Holy Cross. So as we place the cross of Christ on our churches, in our homes, around our necks, and in so many other places, each is a way to honor God's chosen instrument of glory and to venerate it. And finally, exalt it. The upcoming Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross on September 14th celebrates the historical event of the finding of the true Holy Cross of Christ by St. Helen the Empress in the year 326. She is portrayed back in the back. Upon which, Patriarch Macarius raised it before the crowds in the holy city of Jerusalem, who bowed down, they venerated before it, and they chanted many times over, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. They did not hide it as an instrument of death. They exalted it as the pathway to life. And this hymn from the Orthros of the Holy Cross calls us to do the same. Exalted is your cross today, it says, and all the world is sanctified. O Christ, who sit together with the Father and the Spirit, you stretched out your hands upon this cross, and thus you drew the whole wide world to knowledge of you, O Savior. Count worthy of divine glory those who with faith obey you. Finally, the path, the place of the cross in our life. Having testified to our calling to understand and to venerate and exalt the Holy Cross of Christ, let us conclude by reminding ourselves of its place in our life. St. John Chrysostom, fourth century great hierarch and theologian, portrayed over here and in the altar, lays it out clearly. Let no man be ashamed of the honored symbols of our salvation. But as a crown, let us bear the cross of Christ. Everywhere our symbol of victory is present. Therefore, both on houses and walls and windows and upon our forehead and upon our mind, we inscribe it with much care. For this is the sign of salvation wrought for us and of the goodness of the Lord not merely by the fingers ought one to engrave it, but by the purpose of the heart with much faith. So we have reminded ourselves today of these three things, the folly of the cross in the world, the glory of the cross in our faith, and the place of, cross, of the cross in our life, concluding with one last hymn from the feast. This very cross of the Lord then, let us surely hold as our boast, for this would is our salvation, the shield of peace, the trophy invincible. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray to the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ our God, and hope glory to you. May Christ our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. 
through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless, bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the holy martyrs, Minodora, Methodora and Nymphodora, and Pulcheria, the Empress, whose memories we celebrate this day, our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and of all the saints, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect you. Good morning. Please be seated. Our parish council will pass the offering tray, and we thank you for your gifts of love for the ministries of Holy Trinity Church. Please keep in mind you also may make those donations at the kiosk with a credit or debit card in the narthex and also online. Well, while the parish council is passing the trays, we want to welcome everybody again. We especially want to welcome any visitors we have today. I believe there are more than this, but at least I do have a name of Adia Zvesh. Zvesh. Where is that? Where are you? Adia, do I see you? Well, oh, welcome. Nice to have you here today. Thank you. I recently moved into the area. And welcome everybody who has joined us. Uh, especially we welcome any friends who have joined us from their uh, festival tours and decided they wanted to come back and thought we were serious when we said come back and join us for a liturgy, which we much, very much are. There, uh, today is the first day of church school, so we ask you please give the students an ample opportunity to, rem to have their lessons. The uh, youngest of them, if you need to go up to get your children afterwards, you may do that. But everybody else, we ask you to please go to the hospitality hour, and the um, children will come down afterwards. They have their own snack area, and then they will come down and join us. So please, otherwise, let's leave the teachers to finish their lessons in peace. The uh, Trisayo is offered today for the Stepano family, and they are hosting the hospitality hour, and we thank them for that. <clears throat> A couple of services this week. Uh, we have Paraclesis to the Theotokos on Tuesday at the chapel at 6.30. And then, of course, feast, the Feast of the Holy Cross, which I spoke today, Wednesday evening, Vespers at uh, Holy Cross in Mount Lebanon, and Thursday morning, the liturgy there. On Saturday, we have our annual blessing of the animals. So that takes place outside the church, not inside the church. Our custodian, custodian is very happy about that. And uh, so, Please be here a little before 10 if you can, because we'll do the service at 10 o'clock sharp. These animals just don't seem to have the patience that uh, you do, and so uh, it gets a little bit ruckus after a little while if we have to wait too long. So we'll start at 10 o'clock. Please have them here. Dogs, cats, parrots, rabbits, whatever it is, they're all God's creatures, and we'll offer a blessing in the honor of the Feast of St. Modestus. And uh, we also, uh, let's see. Okay. Also, you see on the back of the bulletin, nope, not the back, but it's on page five, the house blessing schedule. So the house blessings uh, reservation is, uh, reservations are open. They are on our website. You just go to uh, holytrinitypgh.org slash events and you can reserve the house blessing. Be glad to come and do that for you. A big, big announcement, and it deserves its own flyer today, and that is, after a long period of preparation and a uh, most worthy uh, offering to the Lord of his service to the ministry of the church, our own Matthew Palomara will be ordained to the Holy Diaconate on Sunday, October 8th. His Eminence Metropolitan Savas will become an offering that. And following that, we will also have a luncheon hosted by the community in the Grand Room. So again, we're asking, please, for you to go to our events website and register for the luncheon. Everyone is invited. And then finally, we have a little job to do today. And 
the man you all know and love and always listen to when we really need something done. Jim Valoris would like to invite you to be good stewards today in helping out. Well, thank you. Three uh, quick announcements and then three reminders. Um, one, I just want to take an opportunity on behalf of the festival committee to say thank you. Uh, thanks to all the good stewards for anything that you did and giving of your uh, talents. Um, because true stewardship is both time, talents, and treasures. And that was truly a uh, talent. So thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts for all the efforts. It goes a long way. Um, but today we've hit another milestone. Um, the container from Greece, and Brian, am I right, it is at the port of New York, or will be there any minute. So the first container that contains all of the woodworking chairs has finally arrived in New York. That's a huge milestone. So thanks to Brian Fitzpatrick and Angie for shepherding the, 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 the journey. Without their help, it wouldn't have happened. But thank you, Brian. <laughs> so uh, it's the first of two containers. The one container contains the chairs, and what else was on the first container? Uh, various items. Various know. other items. Uh, whatever, the, second whatever they fit. the second container has the iconostas as well as the altar table. That is leaving the Port of Pires today as well. So the second one will make its voyage. The reason it's important is once that container clears customs out of New York, it's going to get on a truck and head its way here to Holy Trinity in the front door. But that's where I need all of your help. There will be an email or a text or whatever from Realm coming out, and we need volunteers to be able to unload these beautiful chairs from the truck and put them in here. Um, so we're going to, it'll be, you know, three, seven days. It may be Friday, it may be Saturday, it may be Sunday, it may be Monday. We don't know yet. It depends how long it takes to clear customs and get here. So. Keep an eye on your emails, keep an eye on your text messages, but if anybody has any time, when we give you the window, everyone can help. It's basically lifting a chair off the back of the truck and bringing it in here without dropping it. So you gotta lift about 25 pounds, <laughs> so just know that. Just a reminder, they told us that they were all boxed. Yes. So even if you can't lift big stuff, and you can run a razor knife down the box, the side of the box, anything, come and help. These chairs need to go out, those chairs need to come so, in. So that's so. the other thing is we have found a home for a hundred of these chairs, but we're looking for a place to get rid of the other 250. So with that being said, if anyone wants chairs for their home, you're more than welcome to take the chairs. We're trying to find another donor. George Deacus called the church that bought our church on the north side to see if they wanted them. We've gotten rid of 100, but we still have 250, so we're going to have a little log jam here as the new ones are coming in and we have to have a place to put the old ones, and we really don't have storage room here. So if you want chairs, they're 10 and a half years old, but they're still in good shape. If you want chairs, you can take them. If you Not know, yet. Not yet. Not <laughs> this week. This week. But we do need to have a transition here. Or if you know of someone who can use them, please let George, myself, or George Mellis know, okay? So that's the first thing. First container in New York, second container leaving the port in Greece, they will be here. The woodworkers are going to be here October 16th, 16th to install everything here. And that brings us to the celebration, right? So we're 55 days away from our celebration on November 3rd, November 4th, and November 5th. Please go online. There's a flyer in here today. Get your reservations. You don't want to miss this. It's once in a hundred years. In our lifetime, we'll never consecrate another church, Father, right? Not in mine. Not in mine. <laughs> right? So, you know, this has been a 10-year journey. You want to be there. So there's plenty of events. There's a Friday. There's a Saturday. There's a luncheon on Saturday. There's a gala on Sunday. There's the first church service that will be done with everything there. So you want to be part of that. So please go online and sign up. The other thing is, if you have an outstanding pledge, we are making payments every week to all the vendors that have supplied all the things, and we really do need people to finish up the pledges that they've committed to so that we have the financial wherewithal to be able to pay for everything. So we are wiring money on a regular basis, and the funds that we have are being depleted, so we are in need of the people that still have outstanding pledges, so if you can do that, that would be great. 
But again, thank you. Appreciate you staying with us on this journey. We've made great progress. Have you seen? We will be done soon. But thank you to all your efforts. Appreciate it. And I want to thank our official Holy Trinity cheerleader, Jimmy, for getting that done and helping shepherd it through as well. Thank you very much. All right. You have a blessed afternoon today. Let's come forward for the Andidaron. You'll be dismissed by the Parish Council.